All right, Jeff, you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, cheers, man. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's maybe start. Uh, do, do I introduce you or you introduce yourself? Jeff Motel, Motel. Is it M Motel, yeah? Motel, yeah. Everyone has a... a different way. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah, got yeah. Motelli, Motley. <sighs> yeah. So where do we go from here? So, I, I mean, the first question everyone asks you <laughs> is like, uh, how, how do you do make, make your money? money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, just... just yeah, yeah, tell, yeah. I, I know, yeah, but you know, uh, I'm curious. I, I, every single event I've gone to probably in the last five years, and it's only been recently, every, at least five times, people have started to ask me how I make my money. So I've decided I have a new rule for 2019. If you ask me how I make my money, you owe me a drink, and then I'm going to make up this wild story like... I sell, uh, you know, um, gutted pandas in Zimbabwe or something, you know? <laughs> It's crazy that people come up to you like just out of nowhere. Like, how do you make your money? Yeah. And well, it should be obvious. I've been doing it for twenty three years. Shit. I have knowledge. I'm able to sell that knowledge <laughs> and and help uh, consult to people in the industry. It's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, one of the big things, I mean, that we've talked about, and and Jeff has just been with us a couple of days. So we had. Loads of talks, right? But I think the one big thing, and because you're, you're a good friend as well, so I think one of the biggest things is exactly how much you do for everyone and how much of a, a kind of an angel. Sorry, there's no better word than that. <laughs> but how much of an angel uh, you are and how much you actually do for the industry and how much you do for companies, not just like... Um, companies but individuals freelancers all these types of people but you do this a lot behind the scenes and i mm -hmm. think like this is one of the biggest um yeah it's one of your biggest traits and what i wanted to ask is like could you tell us like one of the stories that you've helped out and how you've helped out because i think like the the tons of stuff you've done for us is is incredible and i'll touch upon that but yeah if you could kind of just you know tell us a little bit of what you do in the industry and because you i mean it's not just cg architect as in the web page mm -hmm. you have the yeah. web page yes it's a big yeah. thing but you have all this expansion of stuff and you know, i say stuff in the, the nicest way possible but all these things that you do behind the scenes and no one ever sees and yeah. actually when we go to events <coughs> and we meet you and we get to know our oh, freaking out this is jeff and this is incredible that he does all this stuff can you touch upon like some of those stories and maybe one that's kind of jumps out to you as something cool, I yeah. think. I don't know. It's just it's hard, to, <coughs> hard to pick out one in particular. There's been so many things. I mean, just yeah. having been in the industry so long, you know, by virtue of that fact, people just send me emails and yeah. ask all sorts of random questions. And, yeah. you know, can you have advice on this? I mean, I think last week somebody called me because they were uh, they're running a software company that's been around for yeah. a few years now yeah. and yeah. their strategy is not working and yeah, yeah. they came to me to ask some thoughts on their strategy. Uh, about a month ago, um, a guy flew in uh, to Calgary, where I live in Canada, um, and we sat down for two days just to discuss, you know, kind of him wanting to kind of evolve into the, differently in, yeah. the, in the industry. Um, yeah, I spoke to a lot of vendors about how to how to uh, place their products in the ArcVis industry. Um, I think the, probably the one story that maybe it wasn't necessarily somebody I helped directly per se, um, but I sometimes just having done this for so long and not uh, taking it as maybe seriously as I should yeah. sometimes, there was a guy that had um, just uploaded to the gallery on CG Architect yeah, yeah. and um, I liked the image and I, yeah, I think, yeah. I can't remember if I featured in a newsletter or maybe a Viz Pro of the week or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found out through friends of a friend that yeah. he was, um, I think he was living in Southeast Asia somewhere yeah, yeah. and he was going, he just had a newborn and he was going to have to leave his family. He was going to yeah, move yeah. into the Middle East because he couldn't yeah. find work. Yeah. And he, it wasn't an ideal situation. He was going to live away from them for probably six plus months. Crazy. And, and uh, because I featured him, somebody saw the work and he started getting freelance work and he was able to stay home. 
yeah. and not have to move. So That's crazy. It, it just seems crazy, like, you know, like, one little thing yeah. like that and how much yeah. impact it could have. And so, I mean, I guess in a roundabout way, that's probably the, my favorite story that I've heard. But I, I know, <clears> like, <throat> and I'm not going to say any names, but man, I, I know when... When you told me a certain person in a certain part of the world, and again, I'm not going to say anything just because, mm. like, um, it wouldn't be good to say anything without that person giving consent. But basically, I, I know you, like, changed this person's life where they, they, they kind of came to you um, and, and said, like, I can't find jobs and stuff like that. And you kind of, you spoke with them, you introduced them around to a few friends and you said, look, I, you know, I'll introduce you. You believed in them. That's the first thing as well that oh, people I don't know. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Now. yeah, yeah. That's the one thing like, uh, you don't go around like Mother Teresa kind of just mm. <laughs> helping everyone. You, <laughs> you also see like the potential and you see when people like need that, yeah. that little bit. And I, I remember like, uh, that person being eternally grateful to you and I've spoken with them and like every time we speak, it's like, man, I owe so much to to jeff and i mean even man even what you've done for us like we had this problem with this uh kind of copyright infringe, infringement a little bit and again I, I wouldn't say any names but man i i remember how you know pissed off i was and how really angry i was that these guys were kind of imitating our name and everything i even published something on facebook and I remember that that already started a little bit of controversy. And I, I just recall how you you stepped in and you said, you know, this is not great. Uh, everyone was commenting on the stuff, but your little mm -hmm. comment got noticed. Yeah. yeah. And they came straight to you. And yeah. and you kind of liaised with them and you liaised with me. And you, man, like for no fee, nothing, you resolved something that, you know, could have got messy. Mm -hmm. And this is like, this is the power that, you have and the mm -hmm. you know the things you've done over the years i guess that kind of that makes me get onto my uh, let's say next question but you know how have you seen this industry evolve you know, you've been around when did you start yeah so uh, when did I, you get into this what's you i want to say the very first visualization i ever did would have been maybe 1994 I mean, it wasn't professionally, yeah. um, but when I was experimenting yeah, with yeah, stuff, yeah, it was probably 94. I was in diapers. Professionally, yeah, I, I get that a lot. Um, I want to say it was 95, when, 95, 96 when I yeah. started doing it professionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. really into the production ni late 90, mid-1996. And then I worked, That's yeah. Crazy. But I've had all sorts of different jobs doing that. But yeah, that was kind of like the first first time I got and into how, it. how, I mean, I mean, you've told me this a thousand times, but I guess to everyone. How's it changed? Yeah, you asked yeah, me how it changed. But, but, but even before that, like everyone now is like seeing, they think things are overnight. And, mm. and what I want to kind of talk upon is that the effort you've put in that and how you started CG Architect. Then we'll get mm -hmm. to the 10 years thing. But yeah, yeah. I, I really want to kind of know that story. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, ne I didn't ever start CG Architect with the intent of it being what it is today. I mean, yeah. I had no idea it would become what it is today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was working in production. I was working for a company and I was kind of, I mean, this was back in the, I guess by the time I started CGRT, it was 2001. Yeah, so yeah. I think I had the idea probably the year previous. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to get it up and running. Um, but I was bored. And back then, I mean, there were there were other sites in the VFX mm -hmm. and games industry, but nothing in ArcViz other than, you know, software forums that Autodesk had yeah. for Lightscape and that sort of thing. So we really, other than that, we had no idea who else we lived in the industry or who yeah. worked in the industry. So I thought, well, there's all these other community sites and yeah. VFX and games. I'll create yeah. one for this so I can try to figure out who's in the industry. Yeah. And, and it, was, it wasn't, again, it wasn't a business. I mean, I think probably in the first year, out of necessity because the server yeah. started to cost more money and that sort of, of thing. I had to get some sponsorships. So it's always but like helping out as kind of yeah. your calm, calmer points as we yeah. <laughs> say we're always kind of like out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, and it's, I, I think I like to think that most things I've yeah. done in over the years have not ever been with, you know, a business in mind. Obviously yeah. I have to pay bills like everybody else, yeah, but yeah. Uh, generally, even when I come up with a new idea or somebody yeah. comes to me with a partnership, I tend to look at it as how can we make this work? What can we do that's yeah. cool for the industry? Yeah, yeah. And then, okay, if I'm going to do this, we got to pay each other. We have to pay our of bills. Course, so then how do we also make yeah. money from it as well? But I think very rarely have I ever approached anything in this industry with the first thought of how do I make money? 
Shit. Very, very rarely. That's, that's crazy. And it kind of, you then develop through your, like through your comma points, let's say that you kind of develop the whole strategy of how to make money doing something good and it's for the greater good. But yeah. of course you've, you've got to pay your time, right? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, I, I want to say, I mean, I, it, I don't know when exactly, but for many years, especially when I started to become a little yeah. bit more successful and, and yeah. I realized I did have to make money and I did have to be accountable for my time if I wanted to do it. Cause you know, I was helping a lot of mm. people on the side and I felt guilty for years, even just <laughs> making money Shit. <laughs> because it was, cause it was for the industry yeah. and it shouldn't, I didn't, I felt like I was kind of like taking somehow taking advantage of the industry by making money. And but, that's, you know, that's crazy yeah. because there's, I think in, in Portugal as well, we have this thing of like, um, money is such an off lim, uh, you know, an off topic thing. Uh, no, there's the cultural thing is no one likes to ask for money. Yeah. And I know a lot of business go through a lot of strife, for even that they need the money. And, but the Portuguese thing is like, and I can't, again, nail it down to a whole culture, but there is this thing of like, you learn money to someone you never ask for it. Mm -hmm. um, there's this whole thing of, uh, <laughs> favors and money isn't just one of mm -hmm. those things so that guilt that you have like when you're you're making mm -hmm. money doing something good or like you know i can't mm. believe i'm kind of yeah. getting paid for doing something i love and enjoy yeah i can, I, I, I mean it's i mean i guess it's not like it's a secret but i i feel like if you do good things yeah good things come back yeah to I, you. I totally believe yeah i mean and of course you can't do good things expecting that you know yeah. you're going to get paid you yeah. do it uh, because it's the right thing to do or it's something yeah. you want to do. And then, you know, it all comes the universe like, pays you back somehow. Yeah, you yeah, it, yeah. I, I definitely agree. And I, I couldn't be, I mean, this whole channel kind of came from that. It was mm -hmm. like, do good things and good things will happen. And now it's kind of just evolving to this kind of talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that kind of then, yeah, I mean, that brings me to the next thing which I wanted to talk about. And I think this, we could talk like three hours of this because we, we've had talks and how has, I mean, you've seen the industry evolve, like, and I, even consulting your website, I mean, yeah, it's it's an honor, like, because I've always seen your website. And we were even talking about that email that oh, yeah, you your sent first about, e yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the making of where Jeff sent an email of one of the pictures to make a making of. And I was like the little school girl, girl crush <laughs> type thing. And... And I was like, oh my God, that, oh, thank you so much. I'm such a, I'm such a fan. I love all that you do, everything you do for the, mm -hmm. for the community. So like just even having you here today and I, we keep saying we're so, myself and Kelly, my wife, we're so privileged to know you and that you're such a, a great human being. But I, I'm really curious, like for your take in the last 10 years of what's happened and what you think as well is going to happen. So from past, present, the mm -hmm. future a little bit well i mean when the industry first started it was very much software driven mm -hmm. because it was super technical mm -hmm. um you know there were artists people doing cool creative things but for the most part it was novel i mean this is a story that's been told many times by many people in the industry that have been around since then but it was very much novel people would commission digital renderings instead of the traditionally yeah. created renderings because it was novel they weren't yeah. necessarily good but yeah. they were novel so people wanted to use them um then, you know, into the, I guess, early 2000s, mid 2000s, mm -hmm. I suppose, you know, that all started to change and, you know, the more people coming into industry, you know, more focus on creativity and storytelling yeah. and specific styles. And, gun, yeah, bionics. yeah, exactly. Yeah. That yeah. all came about. Um, but I think the, you know, and then probably I would say the last five or six years, yeah. I've seen more. It's interesting. I'm fascinated by what's happening now because I've seen more people come into the industry in the last five or six years than probably the previous 15. That um, is crazy. And they're all kind of of the 20, they're all kind of in the early 20s, late 20s, yeah. most of them, um, which what? is fantastic because the industry is growing. Right. Um, but it's, it could be interesting because it's, it's a really, uh, I don't want to say chaotic, but it's a very transformational yeah. time right now. Yeah. There's some stuff happening. I mean, the talk I'm doing, it's the whole reason I came to London was to do a talk for the Vertex conference. Yeah. And my talk is on the potential impacts of real time and AI machine learning uh -huh. on our industry. And whether or not those two particular technologies are the, are the drivers for this change, yeah. I think, at least in part, but if even if they're not, 100%, 
there will be a democratization of rendering, a simplification of the software we use. Yeah. Um, and isn't that kind of already happening? Because like, well, even the real time, if you look at some of the yeah. in engines now, I mean, there's less and less settings. All yeah. of the settings that pretty pretty I mean, much exist in rendering yeah. is to get rid of artifacts from the yeah. algorithms, and that then yeah. brute force is allowing I us remember. to go away from that. I remember that. <laughs> so I think I think our industry is in for a big change. When if you think most of the people in this yeah. industry are in the industry because they happen to be experts in software, mm. many have so, you know a good portion have talent and an mm -hmm. eye. Not all. Many are just very good with the software. Man, and if that get technicality goes away, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's cool. It's my, uh, it's my, my personal take on 23 years in the business. So <laughs> I, I'd like to think I have some insight into it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think even if it's, like, say, those two technologies that aren't yeah. the driver, the simplification and democratization of visualization 100% yeah. is going to have a massive impact on this industry. And I think the people that are built businesses... It's kind businesses, of already happening a, a little, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Like, even, even now I talk to people that have been doing it for a while, and they say most of, a lot of their clients don't come from architects anymore because they're doing it in-house because they can. Yeah. I was, you know? I was a, mm, yeah. Different. So now you... I think the people that survive are the ones that have very niche clients like for example you specialize in in uh hospitals or you specialize yeah. in in uh, yacht interiors or something like that you have a or you have a very unique uh, artistic style that is yeah. different than everyone else although i'd argue over time machine learning might be able to replace that too it's in That's crazy. some crazy development you should there. be able to also predict a little bit like what's coming, right? Machine learning in, ter in terms of trends and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose if, if somebody collected all the big data together, maybe, yeah. but nothing out there now that I know that could do that. But. And, and do you, I mean, what, so these, these new players that are coming onto the field, and I, I mean, we've seen a lot. I, I have my personal opinion that mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit what you're saying, democratization. Democratization. Yeah. You got it. Beautiful Canadian accent <laughs> <laughs> uh, of software, but also of learning. Uh, mm. I think, I mean, well, hopefully we're a little bit responsible. I know you, you have CG school. Had, you, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you had CG school, but you, I mean, I remember watching the CG architect tutorials that you had mm -hmm. with V-Ray. And I think a lot of us watched that. But at that time, there was nothing. There was mm -hmm. only what you had out and probably a couple other things. And do you think that that also might be a big thing? Like knowledge is kind of, and, and now there's a, there's a thing where it's also expected that knowledge is free. Mm -hmm. That's what, it's a bit. Well, here, here's the thing. So all of the most, if I want to say 90% of all the teaching that's out there now is teaching software, yeah. primarily some concepts yeah. like lighting and composition. Yeah, Very yeah. little of the teaching out there is yeah. that. But let's just assume that the software is super simple and it's now yeah. it's like, I always use the analogy, the way I think the way uh, rendering will be democratized is the same way the photography was democratized, democratized with the advent of the mobile phone. <laughs> so you have mm. millions of people that are now photographers taking mm. photos that previously would have never done that. The same thing will happen with rendering. So on the training side, if, if now we're not teaching software, mm -hmm. You know, and maybe this isn't tomorrow, but it will happen. If we're not teaching software, what are we left to teach? Now we're thinking about teaching the oh. traditional, what you would yeah. learn in a fine arts school. Yeah. You know, yeah. or or maybe more about how this industry works or maybe how to liaise with clients, how yeah. to run a business, how yeah. how to understand, you know, how this industry works. Why, yeah. why do you get commissioned to do these images and how do you yeah. work with a client and what are the phases of, you know, a design mm. life cycle that, where you can help and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that then becomes what needs the to next be taught. Frontier. And you kind Perhaps. of, I mean, you are touching on this, right? Because uh, I know your business in ArchViz series, which is, uh, and again, the other day we were talking about this, where it's, I thought it was like a three, four part series. You're like in 16. Yeah. And I think we got another, like I was telling you the other which, day, I think we have six or eight more. Again, so. it's a little bit of democ <clears throat> democratization of learning. Because people mm -hmm. are now seeing this, wait a minute, let me see all these top guys, how mm -hmm. they started. If I kind of replicate this formula, mm -hmm. I can myself. Yeah. It's interesting. I saw a, uh, a YouTube video the other day and, and this guy was going off about um, how he's seeing this trend about covering business in this industry. Yeah. He's like, this not, not what this business is about. It's about creating images. <laughs> yes, I, you're right. It is. But... Uh, I would argue that yeah. the business side of this industry is 
the primary reason it exists. Yeah. You yeah. know, people aren't creating images to hang on their walls for fun. Mm. The end goal of these images sell. is for people <laughs> to sell something and make money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's definitely and, and I think too, um, there are definitely clients that are high on, you know, aesthetics are high on their list of priorities. There's a certain type of client for that. But the vast majority, I mean, the, the same mm. guy was going off about how, you know, it's all about the quality and the, mm. the details and the image. And in some cases, that's true. In the vast majority, it's not. It just mm. has to be good enough. No, I mean, yeah. a friend of mine told me this. Uh, and t to some mm. aspect, I mean, everyone focus, images are extremely important. Mm -hmm. But you also, you, you have to client. You have mm. a client and a client wants a certain type of image. Yeah. Now, there are only a few studios and people in the world that really kind of can uphold their own style and yeah. whatever till the very end mm -hmm. and say, no, this is our thing. And mm -hmm. like, you know, we're, we're big artists, but everyone has a client at the end of the day. And he was saying, you know, um, you might see these huge firms uh, that, you know, uh, XYZ might have images much better than these firms. But mm -hmm. these firms, how they liaise, how they manage projects, how they how they have that, that whole circuit and how they brand it and how they work. Mm -hmm. That's what makes them work for these big clients and be able to charge like crazy. And yeah. again, like I well, don't. If, if you talk to, if you look <laughs> back and, you know, maybe we'll touch on this a little bit later, but a, a lot of the new people coming into industry yeah. are, you know, and maybe they're not out there enough, these companies that have been around for a while, but they're coming into the industry and they're like, I've heard so many comments that may, where they're thinking that this industry only came about in the last five or 10 years. Yeah. But if you look at the most successful companies in this industry that have been around for 20, 30 years, their business is, yes, they do create images. That's one thing they do. Yeah. But their business is not creating images. Their business is based around trust, around understanding what the client's trying to do, around marketing strategy, yeah. around sales, it's, it's not about images. And I think, I honestly, I think anybody in this industry whose soul, not to the exclusion, not everybody who does, there, there's always, yeah, there's, always course, there's always extremes where outliers, right? Yeah. But I think anybody who thinks that they're going to stay in this industry long-term and only just create images like a, yeah. like a uh, commodity, yes. um, you can just create images if you understand the strategy that your yeah. client's trying to do and you help them with that strategy. Yeah. But if you're just creating, because they come to you and they're like, hey, we need an interior, here's the plans, yeah. crank it out. Those people aren't going to last in this industry long term. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because it's, what is it? Teach a man to fish, uh, give a man a fish, eats yeah. for a day. Yeah. Teach a man to fish, yeah. eats when he wants yeah. type thing. Well, and that's going back to your, your point on education. I think that's another problem we have too, is a lot of the education that is out there now, Some there's a few exceptions. A lot of the education out there now is teaching paint by numbers. We're not teaching people how to think critically about the images they're creating. Mm -hmm. We're teaching them the settings, adjust your software yeah. to these settings yeah. and you get this result. And then when there, something out of the box yeah. comes, they don't understand how to fix it or yeah. they don't really understand what they're doing. They just know yeah. that if I do these settings, I get a nice looking image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? but And this, you can fake it doing that for a while. You're touching yeah. on this and I know like that there's there's this huge thing like everyone goes crazy every time we mention anything to do with technical versus artistic and we say do it in post and yeah. and then people are like oh but you did this 3d uh uh yeah. how much of this is post so like you mm -hmm. know but not in a nice way and it's it's you know it's it's half and half yes true uh, you have to do a bit of everything but at the my point was that Basically, when, when you're, you're doing these things and you learn these things, you're even learning the software and all that. Sometimes you even learn this in terms of composition and all that, which, are, which people go, okay, you've got a great mood, put this mood, such and such, mm -hmm. put a person here so it gives feeling, and that's it. But people are not really exploring the basis of the art, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So where yeah. does that come from? Why is that person mm -hmm. uh, not... You know, what's the what's the motive mm -hmm. of having that? But what's the feeling that you have there? Yeah. How can you get inspired in different ways rather? Because now there's this, um, and I mean, we're all guilty of this. I have to kind of put myself a little bit on the side. But basically there's this tendency where it's like everything is very neutral. There's a lot of fog and there's like a lit up beam in the middle. That's a deep image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our industry is very self-referential. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. like, but if we're all doing this, it doesn't matter how old Nordic interiors, again, I don't want to take away, and I criticize myself when I'm saying this, 
Um, but if we're all doing this, what's, you know, um, mm-hmm. how are we going to advance? And that's not settings, yeah. but that's a different yeah. type of thing. But it's like settings yeah. in, in a compositional way and stuff like that. It's, yeah. I think, exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Fast forwarding a little bit, uh, and I think it's touching on that, is do you think that originality is lost in what we do at the moment? From like, because hmm. you can see this from far away. We're all in the pool, like killing each other and strangling each other, yeah. and all kind of stuff. But do you think, like, we're losing originality because because of social media? That that yeah, post I, yeah, that you put yeah, the other day. Yeah, I made a post about this because generally <coughs> curious. I don't. know, I think it kind of falls into the uh, the camp of you know specific styles and and what types of clients. Mm-hmm. value an artistic approach mm-hmm. um but do you think we're all kind so, of but, replicating but, each yeah, other yeah but, but but to that point it's like I myself create, creativity well. is a necessity in many yeah. high i would say the higher band of people that work in this industry but it, you know and i so i maybe i'll back up a little bit and kind of premise this too like i think if you were to break down all of visualization and, and, and i call visualization a screenshot of a of a shaded view in SketchUp, all the way to the highest form of marketing yeah. visualization and a film that costs half a million dollars, right? Yeah. So if that's the, I call that visualization, right? Yeah. Eighty percent of the industry, in, in that context, yeah. is, you know, again, everything from a screenshot to some really nice work, it's all three D work or maybe even post work, yeah. is just. You know, for a really basic part of the design process. Yeah. And then you get that upper echelon that is for really high-end marketing. And I feel like most of the time, the visualization that requires that creativity only happens in that upper band. Really? I think. Would you think? <clears throat> Not to say that you can't be creative yeah. in those other components, yeah. but I don't think it's a necessarily a, would you put, as strong of a requirement. Would you put creativity <clears throat> with um, quality? Though? No, I think, I think those are two different things. Because... Because I think quality kind of suggests technicality. Yeah. Whereas creativity suggests our artistic ability. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, <clears throat> this is the thing also that I've seen. And I agree 100% what you say. But I've also seen in, like, younger guys who come less, how do you say, like, they they come less pre-constrained. Because after time you start to get constrained because you're following mm, everyone. Right, yeah, you're yeah. Like, oh, these guys are making it and those guys are making it. You know, Mir. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, D-box, I've... D-Box, all these I've big I've seen companies. many times where um, somebody will come up with, maybe it was novel to our industry, but maybe yeah. it was, you know, borrowed from another industry yeah. or another marketing campaign they saw. Um, I'll see them do it. And then over the course of the next two years... That kind of unique element, mm. almost every year when I when I go through the 3D awards, yeah. every single year there's a couple little themes that you see replicated across the board. Yeah. I mean, not everybody, but you, you see it as a theme that year, yeah. which obviously points to how self-referential energy is and perhaps originality, the originality <laughs> lacking thereof. But I also think some of that also comes from clients because clients, especially at the higher end where a studio is doing work that is seen yeah. kind of globally in the real estate yeah, and architecture yeah, yeah. world, if they, if it was well done, yeah. then another client goes, we want that too. Yes. And then they yeah, try yeah. to come, I would imagine the studio, yeah. if they're smart, tries to come up with their own novel idea, but like, no, 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 we want that idea. Yeah. No, that just, happens just in it. architecture. Yeah. I mean, we see it all right. over the world. Like, uh, Singapore's got those towers right. with a big thing on top, Marina Bay Sands. Yeah. Somehow that's shown up in Dubai, something yeah. similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it kind of makes you think, right? Uh, where, so, uh, but, where's the originality? And you, you touched on one of the most awesome things, and this is, and you know how much I love this, the 3D Awards. Mm. And uh, just, I have to make a small disclaimer here, Jeff, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. But uh, so I've been, I think I've been submitting to the 3D Awards for about eight years on mm-hmm. nine, probably. And man, it's it's like the holy grail of awards <laughs> uh, for what we do. And I think everyone considers it the same. It's like the Oscars of what we do. And you like highly prize this. You, you do an effort that no one else does. Firstly, you get judges, they're not your friends, well, some are, but you, I know the first thing is you always try and get judges that are totally, um, you know, that 
that correspond to a certain year that are totally at the best quality, that are the most progressive. You try and mix it up as well. Mm -hmm. You're one of the first people in the industry that I recall and know of to speak about quality, getting more women into the profession, mm -hmm. not just more women, but their role also more noticed, which I think is also important because it's getting noticed that, wait a minute, we have a quality in this. But yeah, this is just all this side story to say like nine years and finally last year we got nominated in two <laughs> categories. <laughs> yeah. And this was like one of the news. I, I remember like when, when I heard I was... I was blown away. I was jumping in the house. I remember mm -hmm. I told you, man, I was going crazy because it's from the moment that I got into this and seeing that and seeing all the people at the top. And I said, one day I want to have my name there. Mm -hmm. One day. And I didn't win it. And the guys who won it recent, recent spaces was incredible. And I they totally deserve. But just the nomination for me was mm -hmm. a win. Uh I have to see what we can do in the next couple of years. <laughs> but uh, I know this, I mean, tell us a little bit about the awards, all the effort you go to, because I, I know, man, no one has any idea what you yeah, do. Only the judges go, wow. And the nominee and the people who actually get nominated and win see yeah. just yeah. what you do. And I mean, Fabio's touched on this, a lot of people, but tell us, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe I'll sort of premise the story of um, one of the people that, help mentor me a little bit in the industry was uh, a guy by the name of Leonard Tao who owned CG Channel back in the day. Mm. Um, he's also now that. one of the owners of Art Station that I'm sure most people are uh, aware of. But there, he, he for a while there ran a um, conference called 3D Festival in Copenhagen. And during that um, two-year period that he ran, I think it was year two or three, he had an awards for the VFX and, uh -huh. and games industry. And one of the years he decided that he wanted to also include the ArcViz industry. But as I think a lot of people finally find out, the ArcViz industry is a little bit of, it seems similar to everything, uh -huh. but it it's, has its own little characteristics. So he didn't get enough submissions, ended up giving me the, the trophy that he had for that year and said, you know, Give it out. <laughs> you give it out. And that was kind of what, I think I had done a little bit of an awards the year previous, but that was kind of what gave me the, I guess, the push to like, okay, let's, let's turn this into something big where we can really go out and find the best work out there, maybe even some undiscovered talent and kind of shine a light on them. Um, this year is now 16 years. This year, 2008, <laughs> 16 years we've been doing the awards. That's crazy. Um, but it was always something that I, I guess in the back of my mind that I just thought of as something fun and something that could just shine a light on yeah. some cool talent. What I guess over the years, I kind of just because I, I never, I don't yeah. think of things as these big giant, like it's super influential and everything. Yeah. Um, but then you start to hear stories of people's careers that have been launched, people's, um, you know, transitions through the industry that have happened because of being nominated or because of being, uh, of winning one of those categories. Um, it's become apparent to me in the last few years, and maybe I should have picked up on this sooner that, you know, we have to treat it with the same kind of seriousness as the Oscars are treated. You know, you know when yeah. the when the when the guy comes out yeah. and they got a guy from Price Waterhouse Coopers that hands them the the he little envelope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that won't happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I, we treat it really, yeah. really, really seriously. We've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into the 3D Awards platform over the years, um, and, and a lot of that is built around ensuring the integrity of the awards. Um, our mm -hmm. judges, it's done in a way where the judges don't know who the nominees are. Even mm -hmm. I, when I go through, I don't even know who the nominees are until yeah. we actually announce them because the system's set up so that even I can't inject yeah. my own bias in it, even if I wanted to. I know, I've tried so. to, I've tried to, you know, tried to bribe you over with some yeah, stuff. It's but it's well, it's funny because you say you had submitted for nine years and I'm like, I wouldn't even have known, unless I had yeah. seen your image before, I wouldn't have even Man, known you had submitted. I was, I remember every year, and mm. again, like I'm a human being. Come on, you know, we have emotions. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. bloody hell, another year. And I remember Paul Nichols from fa Factory 15, one year, like, I went to speak with him at his studio. And uh, a big shout out to him if he, if he gets to watch this. But um, he said, like, because uh, of potential freelance stuff or, or uh, yeah, working together, I can't remember. But anyway, we, we had a chat, and he was a judge that year. And he said, oh, yeah, I saw this image. I nearly made it to the nominations. Mm -hmm. And then you told me as well when you – and I was like, nah, <laughs> bloody hell, I really want to yeah. make this. And it's not – it's not – again, it wasn't like 
it's not for a career thing. It's not, yeah. it, it's like, it's one of those things that, an accolade that you yeah. are recognized not only by, you know, your work, but also by your peers. Yeah. Which are like I think that's the most important totally part is it's, it's not, you know, we, when we pick the judges or when I pick the yeah. judges, um, I mean that the, I, I always have like, you know, I don't announce a theme for the judges, but I yeah. always have in my mind a low theme. Um, and a lot of them are, you know, obviously well-respected people, people that have previous yeah. winners. I always throw in a few wild cards that are sometimes yeah. out of yeah. industry just yeah. To, yeah. to keep it fresh. And I always have generally 12 to 15 judges. And it's uh, a lot of work. Oh yeah. I mean, they spend anywhere from 20 to 40 hours just reviewing images. And I remember how, again, yeah. how serious the talks are in the emails. Yeah. Because yeah. when, when I judged one year, I, I, I was like, man, these people are like, they got this holy grail here. Yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. serious stuff. And yeah. I, I felt a responsibility towards, well, towards the whole platform and process mm -hmm. of like, you know, you have to see this properly. And I remember debating like certain images. And I know you also had like some stuff with the student competition because mm -hmm. there's always every year you have like. Well, since the beginning, <laughs> since the very first year, or maybe the first few years, <coughs> you know, and I think some people have, uh, you know, commented on the, uh, the length of our rules. <laughs> Those rules, unfortunately, have come about because yeah. every single year somebody tries to find a loophole. Yeah. Someone tries to game the system some way. So those rules are all there to close all the loopholes we found over the years. Um, you know, I, I like to think we've probably caught, you know, probably all of the people that have tried because it comes out pretty easily. Yeah. Um, I mean, people think that they can game the system. Yeah. And if I don't catch it, yeah. as soon as we announce the nominees, the industry catches it. Yeah, and, everyone and, catches and if up. You, and if you think they don't contact me and tell you tell me what's going on, think again. <laughs> I think I think, yeah. but that yeah. also shows just how important this is to yeah. everyone. I think the industry takes them seriously yeah. as well now too, because they they don't want them to be ever compromised. Yeah. So it's not like somebody's like, oh, I don't like that guy. I'm going to report him. It's yeah. like, no, these are these awards are serious. They need to remain, you know, some integrity to them. So yeah. we got to yeah. make sure that these people don't abuse it. Yeah, you know? it's a level of, yeah. um, I mean, it's a level of importance that I've never seen before. I mean, we've se I've seen imitations and stuff like that. And, you know, each way, each thing, each one has their own thing. But, man, this the CG Architect 3D Awards. And I know they're announced at D2. And the whole, it's like an yeah. Oscar process. Yeah, and yeah. and shout out to D2. I mean, I have to give a shout out to our boy Fabio. Yeah. <laughs> and Jason and Christian. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To the whole team and the guys who organize that. And it's, um, I mean, this, this is kind of funny. It just naturally evolves into this. But yeah, it's a, an amazing, um, an amazing event where they, they, they basically, you present this and you give out the nominees. But this kind of leads me on to my next thing about events. Hmm. You are like a social, um, <laughs> For a lack of a better word, <laughs> I wouldn't say it, but you, you're like um, someone who goes to a lot of events yes. <laughs> and you travel like most of the year, right? Yeah, I'm, on the, I'm away from home for probably three to four months of every year. And uh, just that uh, you're in Canada, right? So yeah. you're flying this. Do you want to just tell me where you've been in the last couple of months? Um, let's see. This is March 2nd today. Yeah. yeah. March 2nd. So I've already been to um, Singapore, Sydney. And now London. And yeah. as soon as I get home, I go to um, San Jose. But yeah. I've got like thir this year I have 13 trips that are, that are booked. You're so. like the, the high flyer. Mm. You're the George Clooney of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of up, up, up in the air. Yeah. And it's, I mean, mm. this is all, I mean, to a lot of people I think that are listening to this, this may look like fun and games, but you mm. actually, it's hardcore, right? Like it's uh, yeah. I mean, I think the one. I mean, I, I was a production artist for many years. Yeah. I worked for different companies and stuff. But I think one of the things that I just found my my skill set and I guess what I'm most interested in now is building community and building yeah. up this industry and yeah. doing good things for this industry. Yeah. Um, and that happens by networking with people in yeah. in the field, and that happens at events. Yeah. Well, you've yeah. put so many people together. Again, just going back to the beginning, but you've put. So many of us, and I include myself in that, in contact with each other to help each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time it's it's funny, and we were talking about this a little bit yesterday about the energy, <laughs> you know. And everyone goes to you for help, and that you still have that positive attitude of helping everyone, which isn't easy, especially you know you have a business to run. Yeah. It's, you're doing this like 
pro bono stuff uh, because yeah. you're a friend. Yeah. And again, d please don't all email Jeff now <laughs> asking for help because obviously he's not going to be able to. But um, I, yeah. I know how much, yeah, how much you put your heart and soul out there. And yeah. it's, well, I mean, I guess the way I <coughs> think of it, especially running a site like CJ Architect, like what's the point of doing it and having yeah. the role I have if it's not to help people in the industry? Yeah. But like you say, I mean, I wish I had five of me that could answer every single email that everybody sends and I could spend, you know, three days pouring out everything I know to help them. And it's just, yeah, it, it was, it's, it's tough to do that. So, Oh man, I, I want, I want to ask you something, uh, which is, um, a, a kind of a couple of serious sequential quick questions, but what annoys you most hmm. about this industry? Uh, I should start the other way. What do you love most about this industry? Yeah, Start with the positive. The people, the people. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, I, I've, I've worked in different different parts of this industry, yeah. but, but the Viz side, all these events I go to, I mean, yeah. man, so my best friend, you're one of them. Um, best friends in the industry are from the Arc Viz industry. Um, yeah. They're just awesome people. And, I mean, yeah, yeah. Some, and interesting. All the stories you tell me about everyone is yeah, like. I mean, for the most part, everybody's yeah. creative. Everybody, yeah. you know, I guess, you know, I, I tend to know a lot of business owners, yeah. you know, just by virtue of how long I've been in the yeah. industry. And I just find it fascinating. I mean, everybody's got a different story. There's creatives that are like musicians and, and yeah. you know, well, sculptors Matthew and painters. And, boxes, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's amazing all the stories yeah. that people have. So yeah, I think for sure the highlight is the people for sure, for sure. That's incredible that yeah. you, you say that. And what is it? I mean, what dislike is probably a strong word, but what kind of annoys you the most in this industry? Mm. What do you, I think, I think probably, I don't necessarily think it's this industry. I think it's of, by virtue of the fact that this industry is now mm. at a point where it's maturing. Yeah. It's coming into its own. It's not brand new. Um, you start to see the the politics and the the ugly stuff that mm -hmm. kind of just makes me, me personally. It kind of makes me sad because yeah. I look just because of. I guess Do you my think role, it's getting worse? Worse than it was for sure. Yeah, for do, you, sure. do you think people are more unscrupulous these days? Sometimes, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. But I don't know that that, again, I don't think that it's like the industry has become that way. Yeah. I think that it's grown. And because of that, it just nat naturally, if yeah. you get enough people together, you get a, 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 a few bad apples in the, yeah, in the, in the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And for me, I, I mean, I guess I kind of look, I, I've always said, like, I think of this industry kind of like my child. <laughs> and and I I just don't like to see it Fuck. abused and 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 beaten, you know. So when yeah. I see people doing yeah. things that, you know, I, I'm pretty black and white with some things, you know, for better yeah, for, yeah, be yeah, for better yeah. or worse. And when I see things that I think are yeah. not right, I think that probably bugs me the, the I, most. I mean, you you are the guy. Like I I don't go to Facebook that much, but man. <laughs> every time uh, I'm just there, I get noted. You're one of the few people I get notifications <laughs> when you post something. <laughs> And I'm like, I have to go see what Jeff's saying. Yeah, and I know yeah. when it's not about the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for reference, not, I, I would say probably very little of, of my posts on Facebook have to do with the industry. Sometimes, you know, things that annoy no, me. No, it's but, generally but the it's, house it's, it's, it's usually my house leaking. Yeah, yeah. It's, do, you, do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, so I'll introduce <laughs> this up a little bit. So <laughs> Jeff is like the, he's a tech guru in, at everything. So your house is like wired like Fort Knox with all these sensors and stuff. Yeah. And every time like I, <laughs> go and 90 percent of the time and we'll talk about that yesterday on social media we i go to see what jeff's posted it's about his house a leak <laughs> in his house and he has to fix his walnut floor <laughs> yeah 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 i i don't know i mean I, I guess i guess i should look at it as you know uh, all good comes with some bad and and i guess my my bad happens to be bad luck with anything electronic <laughs> any sort of appliance anything i buy cars yeah. houses i mean i don't think i think i probably return like but this guy's viral everyone oh, yeah. comments yeah, yeah, like it's, it's i funny. see I, I i get i get ribbed all the time i see everyone like yeah. jeff what but <laughs> yeah. you know what happens people love it. yeah people love everyone's it. like that house is cursed you need yeah. to do this that and stuff. yeah i think i had a friend the other day said i needed to have uh, someone <laughs> come and bless the house or something like that to get all the demons out of it or something <laughs> but again this just um <laughs> 
I think it plays as well to your personality of who you are and how much you strive for perfection in everything you do. It's it's yeah, kind of crazy. For, for better or worse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in some aspects, like, um, you know, I've seen you and now, that you know, you've got some stuff coming that I, I'm not going to touch unless you mm-hmm. touch on it. Yeah. Uh, but you've got some up and coming crazy stuff that we've we've chatted about. But everything that you've done has taken time. And I mean... You, I, you know, even with um, even with your website, it's 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 uh, there's some stuff that people might say, oh, you haven't updated this or that, but yeah. it's the way you're working on things. Everything has to be perfect. Yeah. And well, correct. yeah. There's there's part of that. Um, and I think, and I think, you know, I don't have I have people that I contract to for certain yeah. things, but yeah, a lot of it I still do myself. I mean, I talked to some people and they thought I had a five a staff of five or ten sometimes. Man, I thought that yeah. when I first met you. But it's all it's all me. So you know, I do. We run an online store. We run the website. I do consulting with yeah. people in the industry. I meet with companies that need to, you know, strategize their I, product launches. I go to events. I'm I, writing content. I'm I'm curating galleries. It, so at, you're I, an I, advisor. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, and I'm advi- Yeah, I advise to a lot of most of the events in this industry. Um, events, companies, people, freelancers, yeah, you name it, you've so done it. I'm, I've spread myself really thin. Yeah. So obviously some things suffer yeah. some years and other years, other things go up. I mean, this year, you know, you alluded to a little bit. We're working on something big that will be coming out this year. Um, so while I'm here in London, I'm meeting with, I think, 14 different studios in London. And we're, we're discussing the yeah. stuff I'm working on. I, I don't want to go too much into it. But um, yeah, this year, I, I hope everybody's pleased with what we come up it's crazy it's, but it's it's years of thought and planning into yeah. doing this so. it's it's crazy uh, i've heard a little bit but i won't expand on it but mm-hmm. it's crazy and the best thing is like the social karma of everything it comes from again from you and the the, the nice way that you're doing things without exploiting anything or anyone nor being unscrupulous to business is mm-hmm. admirable it's really admirable and and yeah it's well, won't touch too much upon that, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, some of the other stuff that you've done, um, not just the business in, in Archviz, but a lot of um, the women in Archviz series. Yeah. This is such a big topic now, especially yeah. with the it's Me polarizing Too. Polarizing too. Yeah, the Me yeah, Too movement. The yeah. Me Too is not exclusively women, but majority of them. But this has also become such a big thing, and you. Uh, like yeah like i said before one of the first people to to really go for this what gave you um i mean again because you're an equalitarian guy you really don't like injustice what gave you this you know this boost to really start promoting this and really kind of get it out there the message i think because there's even a facebook group that you once again started yeah (laughs) just add a little bit more to all the things you do you know what what was it that got you out there and again it's coming from a man so yeah yeah and the irony is not lost on me believe mm. me i'm trying to remember if i created the women in Archivist series before or after i had um all of the women uh jury for the 3d awards um i think though you know the under regardless of which one came first i think the underlying thought process there was that because the industry was growing so much and because this industry is so male dominated and historically has been almost exclusively male dominated. Um, I was starting to see a lot of really, really talented women cropping up in, in feeds and, and being winners and nominees and stuff. So I thought it was about time that maybe we shined a light on that and that the industry was changing and that, you know, I think, you know, this is, I don't want to stereotype things, but, I think men tend to be more ego focused. And so mm. we, we promote ourselves a lot more mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. social media and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. I think women maybe are a little bit more thoughtful and insightful and maybe don't always feel <laughs> the need to Should. share themselves yeah. out there. And there's nothing wrong with doing that if you are yeah. a woman, certainly. Yeah. But, um, but there was a lot of talent that I thought was, you know, like, like a lot of people in the industry that just yeah. a light wasn't being shined on. So that was kind of the start. And then we started to talk of, you know, I started to think about, you know, why is our industry, why are women not entering this field? Because yeah. architecture also has for a long time been male dominated, I think still is, but there are a lot more women in architecture yeah. than there are entering into viz. And that's 
traditionally where most people come into this field. So I was mm -hmm. thinking, what is the reason for that? And do we need to do something to bring awareness to this industry mm -hmm. so that people realize it's a career path? I, not just for women, but men also. I think something that's kind of surprised me even in the last year or two is how many people have entered into this field and mm -hmm. have said, you know, I went through architecture school and until I got out and somebody randomly told me, I didn't even realize that ArcViz was a career. Yeah. It wasn't even a yeah, thing you yeah, could do yeah, yeah, and you yeah. could make money at and a lot more yeah. money than at least now than, yeah. than in architecture. So a lot of um, people are converting though. Like yeah. it's, uh, it's getting to a point where you can start to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even a lot of, a lot of the applicants and talks that we receive through the channel is, is like architectural students. We, we did a survey. It was like, 70% or something were architectural students. Yeah. yeah. Architectural students, not 3D students, architectural students. Yeah. And they're the ones who are kind of looking at this and going, well, wait a minute, you know, this is a profession. And I think, you know, sites like yours show that, you know, you can make a living and your, your arch, uh, the, the business archivist really shows that. And I think, yeah, more and more these days, that's a tendency. Do, do you think as well, like, and I, I don't want to interrupt your train of thought, but we need more schools, but, you know, not just at you know, a technical level, which we mm -hmm. have some, we have, you know, some really good ones, Adan, yeah. Yeah. for instance. Uh, Chiro. Chiro. Yeah. Uh, Nikos is also developing some stuff. I mean, there's there's a lot of people developing, let's call it technical Mm -hmm. courses and things like that but do you think and i know that here the, the especially in the uk there is bournemouth that has like a multimedia course yeah stuff like that that's more arch -viz directed but do you think there's still a lack of um education in this because you had cg school yeah. right you were yeah. one of the first yeah i mean i think we had one of the very first schools i mean it was it was online but do you we think something formal events. that is more like a bartlett of visualization yeah. is needed i think the interesting thing about a bartlett i mean obviously it's it's a master's program for the architecture yeah. but highly curated and who they allow into that program yeah. um i know i think as we again kind of going yeah. back to what we touched on earlier as this industry becomes less technical probably some of yeah. the more traditional yeah. arts education and yeah. and thinking courses maybe yeah. become a little bit more important yeah Will they be integrated into architecture programs? I don't know. I mean, you still talk to people now that run these programs that don't think of, even though they know it exists, don't think of ArcVis as a career path. I mean, we're here to teach you architecture. Yeah, You're not yeah, here. yeah We're yeah, not yeah. here to get you to go into yeah, ArcVis. Yeah, we don't want, like, pretty images. Yeah. That's a plus, but... So yeah. that's, that's a problem, yeah. I mean, yeah. that, to start with. I mean, the fact that you can go through architecture school and not even realize that ArcVis is a career path, I think, is a problem. Because um, I mean, in yeah. architecture, you can do so many things, right? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why is this being excluded? I think I think an architecture uh, design background is probably one of the most diverse educations yeah. you can have. I mean, I, I know people that work in VFX. I know people that yeah. work in engineering in ArcViz. I mean, arch yeah. I know architects that are in so many different fields that are not yeah. pure architecture. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. that it's that ability to think. And, yeah. and visualize and sense space and I think aesthetics. Yeah. And, yeah, the training has things. a lot, right? It's yeah. uh, you can do it. I mean, you trained as an architect, right? Uh, or technologist, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 man, I remember the day that because uh, I was doing architecture and a bit of vis. I remember the day, just side story, uh, when I told my mom, "Mom, I think I'm gonna." do arch and mm -hmm. she's like you know she's like what what the hell is that <laughs> yeah, and yeah. she was like you're gonna throw away like six years of you know busting your ass yeah, yeah. to get to this and now you're kind yeah. of going to do something you never trained to do and and now like uh you know yeah. now fortunately it's, it's <laughs> funny that in that that women in our phase group we were you know there's all sorts of topics we're discussing about the industry and one of them was you know how did you get into the industry and yeah. and that that exact comment came up but from one of the women and she was saying that uh you know it was a hard decision having spent all this time and effort and money to get an architectural degree yeah. and then give it all up yeah. to do something com arguably completely different yeah. um but then at the same breath mm. said it was the best decision i ever made but yeah, yeah yeah and that that also like i was just jotting down that shows just how much passion goes into what we do yeah and i think like Everyone is passionate in their own profession, but from what I see in ArchViz is the sacrifice that people do, the hours they put in, yeah. and the people who really love this eat, breathe, and sleep mm -hmm. this yeah. field. And 
I think our field is really <coughs> unique and because it doesn't have a traditional learning path. I mean, mm. yes, there are people that teach it, but it's not something you go and take a four-year degree in. Mm. And because of that, um, you know, there's some rare exceptions, but because of that, really the only way you get good in this industry and and get the knowledge mm -hmm. is to just spend the hours teaching yourself. To You know, you can take some courses to mm -hmm. kind of help you along the way, but a lot of people just, so many hours. And I think that just, yeah, it's very unique to this industry, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think... Uh Again, the passion. And I remember Sundays, like all my friends going out and staying at home. And I, I still remember this old competition I did. And I was living and breathing this. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember in the summer, the, the V-Ray stuff, like reading that. And it's, yeah. Again, it blows me away on looking back and all these small steps that you take to to get somewhere. Not that I've gotten anywhere, but basically to to become an artist of architectural visualization, just how long the process is. And I think, and again, I didn't want to discredit, especially because this day and age, and now we're touching, I'm going to touch upon some other stuff, but especially in this day and age where people are, are watching these videos and they think they can, can become an overnight success mm -hmm. and do a couple of things. Everything's easy, dem democratization of software. This I make a few images, mm -hmm. but it's not really like that because then, you okay, so you've made a few images. They're amazing. You put those in your portfolio on your website. Here's a client. He mm -hmm. needs an image in three days and yeah. he's going to continuously bombard you with updates. What are you going to do now? And I think this yeah. is the big thing. Like people just... Uh, well, back to the point of this industry isn't really about creating imagery. Oh. It's about helping your client solve yeah. a problem. Yeah. Images just have to be one of the things that yeah. help solve that problem. But yeah. if you don't, if you're just out there checking out images because people are going to buy you like you're, you know, yeah. drawing spray paint art on the yeah. sidewalk. I mean, yeah. and you, again, you have to have the what you did in your free time has to correspond with the quality yeah. of the professional work. And I yeah. think. That's, Again, yeah, that's that's one thing I hear a lot actually. Um, people will learn how to use the software, put in the hours, and then have a really hard time getting hired. And it's because a the techniques they've learned yeah. oftentimes are incorrect. Yeah, yeah they get yeah. the result. Yeah, 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 but they're not good for production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. If one of the questions that almost uh, gets asked almost in every job interview is how long did it take you to do that image? Because if you did this image, it's yeah, amazing it and it's it yeah. shared all over social media yeah. and everybody loves it, a million likes on it, but it took you six months to do it, you're useless. Yeah, and sometimes it's even a copy. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. So unless you are also talented and yeah. can translate that talent into a production environment, yeah. you're not useful to people in this industry. Because no. again, it's not about creating the image. It's about fitting into yeah. a much bigger business problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. the, again, that, you know, people come into this with false expectations of like, this is my passion and my passion. I'm going to follow it. And it's great and all that, but it's hard work. You've seen, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we touched upon, you were also one of the first people to touch upon mental health and mm -hmm. how important it is in the industry and how, you know, to be much more alert to this. Now, this is something not a lot of people talk on mm -hmm. and, but being an artist as well, you know, you artists have major ups and downs and, mm -hmm. you know, we, we like, we fluctuate and it's, um, yeah, it's tough. And it's yeah. a tough profession. I mean, I don't want to get anyone yeah. like not on this. It's amazing. Yeah. But yeah, well, I mean, we talked about this when we were chatting uh, over drinks last uh. night over dinner. I mean, it, I think it came up and it was, I think because the amount of hours in the beginning of your career that are required to get into the industry, you know, you could work 18 hours a day at this yeah. and, and you're young, you have all this passion and this energy, you can get away with it. But then now you've trained yourself into this mindset of constantly, not it, this is not across the board, but a lot of people in the industry get into this habit of just spending all their time, and I'm guilty of it as well, oh, yeah. um, all their time working yeah. and working. And uh, I'll tell you, how now having been uh, in the industry for as long as I have, it catches up with you. Yeah, you know, you can only oh, yeah. you can only pull that off for so long. Yeah, and you know, you yeah, burn you burn out. You got you have to be careful. You have I to mean, be yeah. careful. I mean, we, yeah. we know a lot of people in this industry yeah, a have, lot. have you know burned out yeah. or. There's been major. I mean, we won't <coughs> mention names, but there's been 
owners of some of the biggest companies in this industry that have had to step yeah. away for yeah. many reasons. Yeah, many it's, reasons. it's, it's hot. And like, um, yeah, even with the team, we speak a lot openly a little about a lot of stuff and what goes on. And, you know, I'm always alerting to the fact to not overwork, mm -hmm. uh, not not because ah uh, that's yeah. right, but because yeah. like we we are friends at the end of the day, and it's great that you're you know you're passionate about something, but your passion also you have to realize you know you have friends around you, you have mm -hmm. there's what is it they say you have family, friends, health, uh, sleep, mm -hmm. and one other and uh, work. Mm -hmm. You have to choose three. Yeah. Those are and the, yeah. those three are the ones you can do. The other ones you can't do. Yeah. So that's probably true. Yeah, yeah, you can't do all of them. So you yeah. have to choose three. And and I think yeah. it's it's kind of true. But you know, yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. And um, I'm hardly one to you know to be the speak the man. the truth of it because I mean I, I to this day I struggle with balance. Yeah. I mean, me and you both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a constant struggle. I would imagine a lot of people in industry yeah. struggle. But you know, it's I, I think you know the the probably what we're trying to get at is that you know don't discount how exactly. how taxing this industry can be yeah. on you mentally yeah exactly you know because when you're young you think you can do it all and you can't often mm -hmm. it will catch up with you definitely yeah. Yeah. and but i think that that said it's also like it's one of the most exciting industries it's the potential to like create uh, when you learn this properly and that's what kind of fascinated me with this was Okay, I have an idea, an architectural idea. I can transmit that idea into so much more, into emotion, feeling, and all these thing, things. And I get paid for this, and it's freaking incredible. Mm -hmm. And that said, you know, it's, uh, I think that's also one of the biggest parts that we all love. Uh, it's the idea of creating. And yes, sometimes we get caught up with techniques and stuff like that, yeah. and like perfection, but, you know, the, the everyone that I've talked to, what they really love about this is the creating process. Yeah, yeah. Even if your image isn't perfect, it's 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 all about like expressing an yeah. in, inside emotion. It's a passion. Yeah, yeah, into something. And it's that you know, I remember when I completed works when I was young and I used to look at them, I used to think, okay, this is better than most stuff out there. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I look at it and I go, well, this is complete mm -hmm. crap. Yeah. <laughs> And and it's I think it's that reward and satisfaction that you get um, after you complete something that kind of adrenaline endorphin rush that we all yeah. become hooked on yeah yeah and that's good and bad <laughs> yeah yeah it's true it's true yeah absolutely. but it's 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 yeah it's it's amazing um really amazing I think we're kind of getting nearing the end and and I know you have to go as well and do your London right yeah heading uh, out of here this tonight you got a dinner going as well to London, got a dinner and then 14 back to back meetings so yeah so you're here so you've been here since Thursday Thursday yeah Thursday and then you're going back on Monday right next Monday yeah yeah I don't yeah. know when this is going to come out but <laughs> you'll yeah. probably be back yeah. but um yeah if if we have some photos I know you're going to have some photos from all the studios. Yeah, I hope I hope I can grab some uh, some good good yeah. uh, group shots from all of us. I'd love all these to different include studios. them and like put them in the end so everyone can put faces to names oh, as that'd well, be awesome. yeah, that'd and be awesome. they can see all the big studios that you're at and all the friends that because we are all friends and it's such a small yeah. industry. We, you, you, everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Everybody it, knows all the inner goings of everything. So yeah. So be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We yeah. always find out in the end. <laughs> Like a little bit of ASMR, um, yeah. man. Do do you want to do you want to add anything? I mean, do you want to do like some selfless promotional stuff? That yeah, I never do that. We never. I, yeah, we didn't promote anything, man. No. Yeah, I like, try. I try not to. It's a funny thing. I mean, I, I know some people that, you know, it's it's a business and they like to yeah. pr promote things. They do. Yeah. I don't know. I tried. I think people are smart enough. They know. They know what I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I should promote myself more, but I don't. <laughs> but, but this is like what it's yeah. all about. Like yeah. this, this whole. And again, it's, this is not going to be a podcast journal, but it's like just having a chilled out talk about industry stuff. And we're a bit tired today. <laughs> yeah. No one has noticed. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Those two o'clock chats. Yeah. They kind of uh, kick you up the butt. But, yeah, man, I'd really like to thank you, Jeff, for yeah, coming by and, yeah, spending the days with us. It was awesome, man. I appreciate you having me on. And, uh, yeah, we had some awesome chats, man. Yeah, you, you enjoyed the wine it. as well, right? Amazing. I, I didn't say where the wine was from. So that was in New Zealand Pinot Gris. 
Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and link it. I don't know. No one ever pays, man. These guys should like send me <laughs> boxes of this stuff. Not that we have a huge, huge viewing, but they should be like, oh, we'll, we'll send you this. Yeah, so if a, you it's a good plan. Selfless promotion now, okay? So if you have a winery or something similar, <laughs> like whiskey, or you have connections, we'd love for you to sponsor the channel. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll have to send some to Jeff, but the, yeah. the invited, invitees can always take one. So if you're out there, that's that's what we'd yeah, like. Yeah. And keep an eye, uh, I, I guess maybe I'll, I'll do one selfless plug, knowing that we're, we're, we're doing some big things this year. If there is something that you think is missing in this industry that you always wished should be done in, in any context, shoot me a message. Yeah. Just go to CG Architect and just go to the contact session. You'll find me. So. And he will reply. I guarantee you. He replies to everyone. It's, Eventually. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It it's might take me a while, but some weeks pass. But, 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 but those emails, I'll definitely get back a lot sooner because it's oh, more timely. Right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> cheers, Jeff. It's Thank really you. awesome. I'm, yeah. I hope this turned out okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'll catch you. Um, I'll probably do an outro or something later on, but I'll catch you on the next one. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you have uh, any comments, links, uh, likes. Oh, wait, uh, wait. I think there's something you got to fuck the bell. Yes. <laughs> As Timon says, fuck the bell. <laughs> the, the knock the bell thing. Uh, we will get alerted to everything. Not that it comes out a lot, but it's, uh, it's a bit of fun. Uh, yeah, it's fuck the bell. It's not do it in post anymore. It's fuck the bell. Um, and yeah, I mean, we really, if you guys want us to, you know, to, to bring up topics. Also, uh, don't forget to, forget to visit CG Architect, um, Jeff's um, page on Facebook. I'll link everything below. Awesome. Um, send him your comments, your opinions, your thoughts as well, because he, he genuinely, genuinely listens a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, thank you to everyone, and um, I'll catch you like on the next one. Cheers, Jeffo. Right. Cheers. Cheers.